online. Yeah. Crazy enough, man. This is actually two players from SoCal. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, been, yeah, It's true. been a minute, been a minute, man. Yeah, true, true. Actually, there's a few uh, players in SoCal doing well today. I saw Elegant and Zinyu also going really far today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is interesting to see. Um, off the bat, though, I already know this is pretty frustrating. Like Any type of character that has good zoning options is difficult for Luigi to deal with a lot of times. Just because he doesn't really have good ways to approach, and his fireball most times is the worst projectile compared to the character he's going up against. Yeah. In this matchup particularly, Luigi really struggles because of his lack of neutral options being very, very poor. And Marco plays this pretty well, understanding like, okay, I don't really have to approach this character at this point. As long as I have him within distance of something of an aerial or a forward air or a boomerang like that, I will definitely just take care of him. And it's going to be Luigi who can catch up to me. I think as long as he keeps this in mind, this will be pretty easy for Marco. Things can get lost if you over approach us because we all know how Luigi can reversal you or grab you for an overextension. Yeah, and he, he's obviously recognizing that. I think even most of the time, he has a bomb in his hand too, so if Luigi does grab him, uh, he has to worry about the bomb exploding during his combo as well. Oh, exactly. that was actually a really good idea with the OB out of shield. It's just like, he didn't time his parry well, so he can actually get out of shield punish. Yeah. Because that was actually. a really unsafe down there from Marco. It really he was. Like, died really early. And it was like you said too, he had the bomb in hand too, so the bomb was there to kind of protect him from possibly getting grabbed or even the upbeat. And not only that, he had to worry about parrying the bomb itself too. This is going to be a down throw. Ooh, but narrowly oh. missing the mark here. That's really good nice. for Marco to go for the upbeat there, just particularly because it does have a lot of active frames and it covers the ledge, especially if your opponent normal gets up or rolls. Yep, very strong. If uh, Luigi was a little bit higher percent, the OB itself would have just killed too. Nice, go for the fourth row here, yep. Now he's off stage again. Has to deal with all these projectiles just to get back to the stage safely. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Confirming the grab from the arrow. Yeah, Marco's actually... I, I can't even give him any real critiques right now because he's just playing the matchup exactly as he should. Yeah. Kira's just struggling, as I would expect. He can't really... <laughs> abuse Luigi's strengths when he, like, the only times he does get in, he doesn't do any real damage. He just kind of, like, throws Toon Link back away from him. Yeah. I think when you look at Luigi's neutral here, the one thing Kirash hasn't able to get going is Fireball, usually an option Luigi loves to use just to kind of close in the gap between him and his opponent. Finally, like, he gets a grab here, but that's not like going to be true at that mark. percent. Landing Tornado. That's the one thing that I think anybody who plays against Luigi has to understand is Luigi loves to know what Tornado, so you have to be very well aware of it. Yeah, part of like fighting Luigi is you throw them up and then you just see, okay, does he does he uh, mash an arrow or Tornado at a disadvantage? And then you <laughs> then yeah. you continue doing whatever it is you want to do. Exactly. And when you when it comes to the game here, like we said, it's a lot on Kierash to like really suffer this matchup because if he jumps over a projectile, that's such a big read for Marco because of Luigi's poor airspeed. Yeah, nice. that's going to be death. That's going to be death. Good JV there for Marco. Uh, yeah. I mean, I already said it. Um, he's just not letting Luigi get any grabs at all. As he should. I, I think when you when you look at it like this, right, like I said, just to finish it up, you Luigi has such poor air options that if he tries to jump over a projectile, Two Link's airspeed and speed in general will be enough to actually counter Luigi. So it's kind of like a Kirash has to sit there and kind of take it and then hoping that Marco overextends himself. But I think the way that Marco knows the matchup as well as understanding how to play it, he's never going to make that mistake. And that's why we see this victory in Marco's hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I really want to see what Kirash does here to uh, win this set, <laughs> to be honest. He's like giving me a uh, vibes of when I watch Elegant go up against uh, Dom's Belmont. It's a very similar, similar strategy. <laughs> but I guess it's even worse because unlike Belmont, um, Toon Link has a decent recovery. So even if he does get Toon Link off stage, he can't kill him very easily. If he that is true. Up. That is very true. 
I think. Or right, I, I I think Kirash he knows. Okay, like I got I gotta clean up my neutral. I gotta like stop getting baited and like getting reversal by projectiles over and over. Exactly. Even if it means slowing down the game to where you know he can find an opening on Marco and then you know get yeah. a good combo. Even I think in, that's what it's gonna take. Even in that situation where he parries, the fact that Marco knows his moves are still safe. Oh, oh no. We'll take it, we'll take it. Yeah, nice. that's that's usually a common option when a, when somebody tries to land on stage by the directional air dodge to try, to try to grab the ledge or preemptively set up attack, and that causes a lot of SDs. Yeah. Just using that down tilt in general at the ledge is super strong, because it's so fast, like, the colors neutral get up and jump super well. If they jump, they don't have a jump, and they're off stage, then, like, a lot, a lot of bad things can happen. Yeah. And, uh, this is, uh, really good already. Like, when Luigi has a lead like this against a zoner, it's actually the best case scenario for him. Because now his terrible neutral doesn't really matter because he doesn't have to approach anymore. Exactly. And it's up to, like, the zoner to try to get in. And usually they also don't have really good approaching options. Correct. So th this is this is where you see them start to make a lot of mistakes, as you can kind of see right now from Marco, and uh, get punished very hard. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what Marco does to bring this back. He's yeah. kind of struggling a bit. But... Okay, that was actually really good recovery from Kirash. I think Marco's doing pretty early. well still, just because like he understands like, okay, even though Kirash has a lead, I can bring this back as long as I keep my mind set of like, this is how the matchup needs to still be played. Even when he has a lead, because like you said, it's going to be on Marco's fault if he overextends poorly, and then that'll give Kirash an opportunity to just continuously run him over with a stock lead. So even, then, even though you'll see Marco still play this projectile game, it's important that he actually keeps this up. Yeah. It's, that's like the again. That's like the rough part of playing a zoning character against a character like Luigi when you're losing because it just because you are losing doesn't mean your approach options suddenly become really good. Like you're, you're still the same character, you know. Exactly. But, so you have to treat the, you treat it the ooh. same way. Nice, nice, nice parry. Uh, this isn't completely impossible for Marco to win, but he he really has to capitalize off the next few hits. Like any type of thing he can do to force. Kirash off stage right now would be really good for him. Yeah. Like, force him off stage, force the side B in the double jump, and then he can get, like, an early kill that way. Okay. Nice. Opportunity. Ooh. Save this jump. Really good recovery. And he rolled past this hero spin. Yeah. Is it a hero spin? Spin attack? I think it's a spin attack, actually. Hero, I think hero uh, spin is the, hero spin. the knees sword. One. But anyway, yeah, that was actually a really good opportunity for Marco. I actually really like that edge guard he went for it, but I also really like Kirash saving his double jump in that situation. Because any other Luigi that's like not good would have died there. For yeah. Sure. I oh, think that's what kind of separates. I think that's so funny thing that you mentioned earlier about the Belmonts also having a good time in this matchup too. Because that's what kind of separates Elegant a little bit from Kirash. It's just that little bit of matchup knowledge that he has in certain matchups where zoners would normally win. Elegant's just really good at that. Yeah, I think it's because like he's been playing Luigi so long and like dealing with matchups where people are just literally gonna like never let him approach. So he has a pretty good mental stamina dealing with that. Yeah. But uh, Kirash kind of shows that too, especially playing online so long now. Like, yeah. This is where zoners are born and bred. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to, you don't get this far, Luigi, without getting good versus Robs and like characters like that. You know? Yeah, Robs and Samus's, but there is going to be the oh, down throw him. with the back air, and Kirash will take this game over Marco, putting it one one apiece. Yeah, that first stock super cost him. Not yeah. gonna lie. Honestly, the way that Marco was playing, if he didn't lose that stock, this definitely would have been a Marco W. Yeah, he uh. He pretty much died at very low percent without doing any damage to Luigi, pretty much. So it's like he started the game immediately playing two to three stocks. Yeah. And like I said, that mistake is usually born from a lot of players preemptively just deciding like, oh, I might get sent into a tech situation, so let me go for a directional air dodge. Which, if you guys don't know, that automatically allows you to go for techs. And a lot of players make that mistake, especially off stage. But also you can grab the ledge with a directional air dodge that way too. And also players also make that mistake. That's how Marco SD'd it essentially. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to call it an SD, but it's just an explanation of like how that situation happened. A bigger yeah. stage here will allow for different dynamics. Like you said, oh. we'll yeah, see. see you now. 
Now this is a really good counter pick for Marco in this matchup especially. Yeah. Like you already saw what he was able to do on uh, I think it was PS2. Yeah, PS2's not a super small stage, but definitely smaller than this. So now he has even more room. Uh definitely can play his keyboy game much better. And you already see like the way he's using the the platforms, like he's not trying to get close to Luigi. Yeah. He wants to have even more projectiles out on the screen at one time. Yeah. And when you look at that too, like you said, he's not—he doesn't have to worry about getting too close to Luigi. Luigi has to go for an aerial fireball. We mentioned earlier how he's very poor in the air, and that gives Marco all the time of the day to just honestly go around Luigi and just not even have to worry about fireball. He even yeah. has moves that just clank with the fireball as well. It seems so. Yeah. Not too bad for him. Oh, that's a pretty bad drop though. You, you can't really afford to drop a uh, bomb fear confirms at this point. <laughs> yeah, you want to be careful because if nothing is true on Luigi. It's bound to get reversal, and you might lose your stock for it. What a oh, read, nice. too, on that roll. roll. And that's that smart, nice. too. That's conditioning, because the way that Kirosh had already gotten used to bombing at the ledge, hero spin at the ledge, he knew that roll might have been the safer call, and then immediately Marco punished that. Yep, that was very smart. And now we have the situation that Marco is really strong in the stock lead, <laughs> but he has an even bigger stage to work with now. Oh, nice catch on that air dodge, though. Really good reaction there from Kirush. Exactly what he needed too, because I think if Marco was able to build like at least like 30 more percent, 30, 40 more percent, it would be really bad for him. Right now it's doable, but of course, like yeah, the way Marco's playing, like I I can't afford to get grabbed. Like <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna let it happen. Man. Nice. The bomb was right next to him too, so even though that was kind of unsafe, like. Blew up right next to him, so Luigi couldn't even get a safe grab. Yeah. And like you said, this counter pick is so good for Marco because look at all the stage he has to run around. This huge percent lead here. Kirash strikes back with a nice 42. But he, look at this situation here. Marco knows I don't have to necessarily over approach. If I can name anybody who built a, a dynasty out of playing lame to win the game, you know, players like H Box, Justin Wong. And I think Marco just channels that. Like, if I have to play lame to win the game, I am very content. Because if I make an over potion Luigi, he will grab me, he will combo me to hell, and he might take my stock for it. Well, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of good players at this point recognize what Luigi's capable of. So, they don't... If they have to play this way to, like, win, it's, it's what you should expect. Yeah. Especially if you're using a character like uh, Toon Link. There's no reason to just like not use your projectiles and just run into Luigi's grabs. Like, yeah. Exactly. Oh. oh he's still oh. alive. He's still living. He's still Wait living. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> that could have been bad though if you really was ready to back air him because he didn't have a double jump. And he has a rage too. Yeah, look at that. Okay, but th this is also though, like, this is kind of where playing this way kind of can get bad sometimes because depending on how patient your opponent is, they could actually, uh, you know, get more comfortable in the match because you're just like you know wasting time and stuff and not really yeah. they're also not approaching you either but he did get that stock so it all worked out in the end <laughs> gonna mark on z drop the bomb there on the platform so he could buy himself some time to get off off of the platform and if kira actually let go of shield he was gonna get hit by bomb that's a bomb oh. drop and it clanks with the up b but it's not enough kira still looking for an opportunity here he starts off with a dash attack he's got him at the ledge can he finish off Marco stock here to put it on even, but at this uh, point, Marco's like playing the platform uh, expertly right now. But yeah. that was a terrible Z drop. Uh, <laughs> expected Kirash to roll into that, but that was just very easy landing to punish. And now Kirash sees he might have an opening to bring this back if he gets the right the right grab here. And uh, yeah, you can see Marco's like, all right, I'm back on the platform again. Like <laughs> I'm playing the yeah. bomb. I'm at six percent. Uh, exactly. I'm, I'm not gonna give it to you. Oh, Ooh, dang. what a yeah, punish! Not good. The DI was not good, but he punished oh, the carry dead. and he punishes the air dodge. Marco right. putting that 2-1 over Kirosh. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for SoCal versus SoCal. Yeah, good good, good job for both players, but uh, especially 